When I was a child, my grandmother helped raise me. She was a wonderful woman. She had trained as a pianist, raised her own family, and was helping raise us. When my grandfather retired, they moved down to Sun City, Arizona. But every Christmas, we would go see them, and every summer, they would come up to us. In Arizona, my grandmother picked up a new hobby, oil painting. She started painting Arizona scenes, portraits of women, pictures of her grandchildren. She had a teacher who had painted a portrait of a rock in Sedona, one of those big red spire rocks with two spires, one that went up like this, a smaller one over there, a pond in front of it, and trees around it. Maybe it wasn't the best technique in the world, but it was a beautiful painting, and my grandmother loved it. She displayed it above her piano for a while and above a couch. That painting was as much her home in Arizona to me as the citrus trees we climbed in the backyard were. The summer of 2004, she died. She was in her late 80s, and her heart just couldn't keep going. I was 23, living in Los Angeles. My mother and I went to her house for a week to deal with all of her things. I'm a pack rat. My mother's a pack rat, and my grandmother was a pack rat. So it took us a solid week going through her things. At the end, we were deciding which paintings would go back to Los Angeles with me and which would go to Chicago with my mother. And I put in dibs on that Sedona painting. And my mother said, well, you know she didn't paint that one, right? I knew it was a totally different style. But she had displayed it so prominently in her home, obviously she had loved it. I loved it too. So it went back to Los Angeles with me, where it went in my West Hollywood home above her desk. A few years later, I had decided to leave Los Angeles and move back to Chicago. I loved Los Angeles. I loved the sunshine. I loved the culture. Don't laugh. There's culture. I loved the people. I loved that I could be hiking moments out my door. I loved my life there, but there were a lot of reasons that were compelling me to move back to Chicago. So that's what I was doing. And on a Saturday morning in late February, I got into my car with all of my fragile things, including my paintings, and I headed east. It was going great. I had good tunes. It was sunny, driving through the desert. I reached over to grab some, some nuts out of my bunched up front seat with all my stuff in it. And I reached over my glasses that I need to drive and I snapped them in half. I was wearing my prescription sunglasses at the time, so this was not a problem for Emma right now. This was a problem for slightly future Emma. But slightly future Emma was planning on being at the hotel in Sedona before the sun set. I made a couple of stops along the way, but I kept a pretty good pace. However, by the time I reached the fork in the road that would be forward to Flagstaff, and turn right for Sedona, the sun was starting to set. I picked up the pace, and I headed up into the mountains. Started getting to areas where there was snow on the ground, and I started losing cell service. Not just my phone, but my internet service. And come on, who has maps anymore? <laughs> my map 
was on my trio. I kept going, hoping I would make it. The sun was setting and I was lost. I was lost and there was snow and it was cold and I was wearing black leather flats. I uh, had gotten a tattoo on my foot, my Los Angeles tattoo, two days earlier. So I was wearing black flats that didn't interfere with the healing process. I was cold. <laughs> I kept going. I just kept driving around and I couldn't find it. Eventually I had to take the two broken parts of glasses and tilt them onto my nose inward. They kept sliding. It wasn't a good plan, but it was the only one I had. Eventually, I found an area, that famous outlook, where you can see down into the valley. And I found cell service, and I called my mother crying. I couldn't find the hotel. What was I doing? Why was I leaving a city I loved? She called the hotel, tried to get better directions for me, but I swore I had been through Sedona and not seen it. Eventually I headed south and realized, no, I had not been in Sedona, I'd been above Sedona, and I found my way to the hotel. The restaurant I was supposed to eat at was closed, so I went to bed with the thought in my head that I might just get back in my car and head back to Los Angeles, call the moving company, have them bring back my stuff, go back to my life. The next morning I woke up, walked out of my hotel door. It was one of those motel style buildings where the second floor doors even led out to outside. It was a beautiful mountain morning sun shining and in front of my hotel room where it had been dark the night before i saw a big red rock two spires leading to the sky there was no pond the trees weren't in the right pattern the rock wasn't in the right formation it was not the same rock as the painting in my trunk couldn't be I went down to the hotel lobby and I asked about the rock. They called it Castle Rock, but I didn't know the name of the rock in the painting, so that didn't help. I went next door to the tourist bureau and I asked for a postcard of Castle Rock. And it was the same rock. The postcard was from the same beautiful vantage point. And it was the same rock. I got in my car and I headed east. I don't know if that was the right decision. I still miss Los Angeles every day, but it was the decision I made, and a lot of things had happened in my life that probably wouldn't have happened if I'd gone back to Los Angeles. The painting is now at the top of my staircase. I walk in my front door and I walk straight up my staircase every evening. And there's that painting looking at me. I don't know if I made the right decision, but it was the decision I made. And I have to wonder what my grandmother had to do with all of that. That's the story of Castle Rock.